So these are five out of six people of the OpenSUSE board. Um, Mauricio um, can't, couldn't attend this year. He's been relocating, um, so that's keeping him quite busy. Um, I'm Gerald um, Pfeiffer, um, technically chair of the board. All right. Um, I was just talking a little bit ago, my, but again, I'll say my name again, Neil Gampa. I exist as a board member. I do things all over the place, uh, mostly leap things and sometimes tumbleweed things and occasionally, I don't know, I can't define kind of things. I'm Patrick Fitzgerald and I um, was elected to the board last year to research the, the ideas of having a foundation, which some of you might know has already been done. I'm uh, Gert-Jan Litting from Groningen, Netherlands, and I do whatever comes at hand uh, in the community. Uh, together with Doug and some others once in a while, we do the community meetings twice a week. Uh, also founder of the bar, uh, I'm active in the forums, uh, other platforms for support. Yeah, and of course I'm Douglas DeMaio and I'm on the OpenSUSE board since uh, this year and also run the project as well as uh, do administration for Google Summer of Code and a variety of other, other things within the community and the project. So um, that's, that's kind of it, I guess, as far as introductions. Um, do we want to go into Q&As or do we want to, yeah. So does any of you have a question? for the board that you would like answered, please. Look, there's another microphone already over there. Yeah. Ah, you, cool. Are you willing to do the running around? <laughs> Thank you. The most microphones. Otherwise, this might be the shortest board session in history. It could. It, yeah, it could wind up being this. <laughs> no, we've got two hours to film. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know if we could do this. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, so much for the shortest session. So, I have a question. Uh, what would you say uh, is, um, uh, how, how much of your work is about deciding things uh, versus uh, doing things versus uh, maybe coordinating stuff? Oh, that's an um, interesting question that uh, I'm not sure we could say there's a fixed proportion of those things. I'd probably say that it's, um, there's a lot of, uh, not a lot of doing uh, in, uh, depending on what your si definition of doing is, there's either a lot of it or, or none of it. Um, if you go with doing as in like acting on process and, and taking action to support the community, I think we do a fair bit of that. If you talk about doing in the sense of making, creating, or driving some specific thing, uh, I don't know if we do a whole lot. Patrick's a weirdo here. He actually like did stuff. Um, but from an organizational perspective and like from the uh, project level perspective, I, I don't think there's a whole lot of any of those that we really do uh, I, I don't have a great way <laughs> of answering this, and I sort of just started talking before I could stop myself. What do you think, Gerald? Yeah, I would say the majority of doing um, is actually not in our roles, necessarily in our roles as, as board members, but people, people have their own projects um, or initiatives they're contributing to. Um, like Doug has been organizing OpenSUSE conferences way before being a member of the board, so that's, that's a lot of doing, but it's not related to, to the board role. Um, I would say it's mostly, it's unfortunately uh, more conflict resolution than one would think. Um, <laughs> that needs to be done, so it's important, that's a, that's a key role of the board. It's not it's neither glamorous nor very satisfactory. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a big element. 
And then it's helping facilitate. You know, yesterday we had a longer conversation in the evening about heroes and IT and open SUSE IT. And this is something I, um, I plan to pick up again on the, on the SUSE side um, after my vacation at SUSECon. So it's more, um, but is that doing? I would say that's more facilitating, ar arranging, and making sure biggest task I would say if I look at it is, is making sure other people or people also including ourselves can do can do the work can can create the best Linux distributions can create the best Kubernetes um, or micro S distros can um, can do con community events and then obviously conflict gets in the way of that um, Money or lack of money gets in the way of that. Mm. So uh, sponsoring, um, sometimes representing towards SUSE, towards the outside. But I think it's more of a, um, carefully facilitating, sometimes snow plowing um, is probably the biggest part. Did you want to add anything? No. Yeah, I, 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 there's nothing I would really add to that. So. You want to add something, Patrick? I mean, you, you did, you've been the exception so far. <laughs> so I, I think one thing that the easiest way to describe it is the board is uh, oiling the, the wheels to make sure that things go forward. And I, that's kind of all I was going to say. Okay. Yeah. There's water bottles there. For once. I do not have a question, but I'd like to say thank you to Patrick and the board as a whole for setting up the foundation because as one of the few people in this room who has been on the board and is no longer on the board, I can see how much of a difference that's going to make to the project running smoothly. So thank you for the t taking the time and making that work. I tried for three years and I couldn't, so thank you and I'm glad that you could. Even the dog loves it. You should say some kind words. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, with, with the foundation, though, really, that's going to, you know, it's, it's set up now. So, really, it, it's going to take people talking with us and interacting with us uh, to build that, right? So, we need, we need activity. We need uh, support and ad advocacy for it. Yeah, and, and going on with that, there's, there, there is a hell of a lot of things to be done. And we're just starting at the very, very beginning of setting up uh, payment systems and you name it. I mean, the number of systems we'll probably need to set up in the, in the end is, well, we're just going to keep on growing. Um, and we need as much help from the community as the community can provide. Um, so we're just, yeah, at the moment, we're just at the blue, blueprint stage well, we should be able to accept donations within the next couple of weeks and beyond that, once there are donations in and bank account is, is beginning to, to fill up, then we can, deal, we can deal with what we need to do. Yeah, and from <clears throat> the Geeko Foundation's setup as it currently stands is intentionally very limited in scope with the intent as things built out and we get more community support that we can scale it out to do a lot of hopefully amazing things to benefit the community, not just with an OpenSUSE, but all the things that OpenSUSE depends on. And from the upstreams and things like that, we want to, uh, I think, you know, we, we want to make this so that we can be a larger, stronger partner in the open source uh, um, ecosystem. Um, one of my regrets is that I missed uh, OpenSUSECon when it was in my home country, in Greece. And it was basically 20 minutes from where I lived. <laughs> oh. But I had to study. Oh. Exams. Uh, is there 
any possibility that OpenZooZoCon will be, not be in Prague or in, uh, Nuremberg in the upcoming future? I'd like an answer to that question, because I sure as heck would like one closer to me someday. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from <clears throat> so from my perspective, um, I actually had this conversation earlier today and was kind of expecting it. You know, um, Nuremberg, it's kind of, there's some benefits to being here, right? Like, we know that. But there's also some drawbacks, right? Because we're not going out to different communities where we're drawing in newer people, right? So there is that aspect. Uh, I, I think definitely, like, with the foundation aspect, um, it kind of helps us in, the, in, a, in, in creating the uh, uh, avenue to have it in different locations. Um, I know, you know, Hans uh, had, had run it in uh, Den Haag, like, years ago, and we, <laughs> we ran into some difficulties, you know. Um, Shrivel also did it, and in, in, in so that, that was quite difficult, but I think definitely with the foundation, it, it opens up some opportunities there. Yeah, if you want me to jump in a little bit, I think that the most pressing issue for organizing a localized uh, version of Open Social Conference is not necessarily the money, uh, but the support organization. And you're going to have to have a, a, a pretty sizable and committed local team. Um, when I organized it together with my dear friend and business partner Robin in 2015, uh, it basically was the two of us doing that. Um, and that makes it more or less a full-time occupation for several months. So that's really not sustainable. So if indeed the foundation would be able to provide more like organizational and logistical support, that would really enable uh, local conferences because also the one in Thessaloniki, uh, Kostas Fudaras uh, was a good friend of mine, and um, also the one in Dubrovnik, which Trevor did, um, they all kind of burned out the community that was there, and you really don't want to have that repeating. So, yeah, any form of organizational, logistical uh, support, maybe even also looking into a slightly dedicated open source conference core team um, instead of a core dog, uh, that, that would also not be a bad idea. But having said all that, again, Thank you guys for organizing this year again. Absolutely awesome. And I love Nuremberg. For me, it's actually convenient, so you don't really have to move. But. I don't know. It kill, it, it, I would like to not have to go through hell to get here every time. Just a quick I believe what, what I love to see is, is more OpenSUSE representation at other events. You know, we've been at FOSTEM, etc. And it's pretty unlimited. If you want, any of you want to represent OpenSUSE, um, I mean, be it a member or other contributor, um, so not maybe a member yet, it would be great to see more, you know, presentations at events, um, or, yeah, creating localized, uh, localized events. Um, you know, m it might be easier to organize a, a, a localized OpenSUSE conference um, instead of immediately going for for a big for a big one, um, and to the extent that we can, in terms of how many chameleon plushes we have available and how much budget, etc., um, it's definitely. I think everyone on the SUSE side, on the Geekos Foundation side, definitely on the board side, would be would be more than happy to support. And for what it's worth, we've it's not an unusual thing for us either. Like. Uh, I think it was like four or five, pre-pandemic, there was this concept of OpenSUSE summits, which were basically micro versions of the OpenSUSE conference that were done at either co-located with other events or something that somebody would distinctly run separately. Like when I went to SUSECon in 2019, we had an OpenSUSE summit. Uh, right after that, there was an OpenSUSE summit that ran in Southern California um, alongside SCALE, and there were ones that were running freestanding, like no other event along there. Um, though I think that concept kind of died out during, and we could bring it back. But, though. So we did. We had one last year at Oscal. Okay. Uh, and that you know that's a that's a good community. They're they're here, um, and and we want to continue to to be a part of that. 
I'll just, you know, this year is a little difficult. But. Uh, yeah, everything's a little hard right now, but like, it is an, like uh, localized versions of this. We do actually have a concept for doing this and a title and like a whole branding for it. We can use that and, and build that out more. But, you know, I, I think it, it requires like community interest and organizational and, and to be blunt, financial support to pull it off. Yeah. Which, just to be clear, none of what we said is, does mean, um, not of what any of us said means no OpenSUSE conference ever uh, in, in, in Greece again. I think <laughs> those are, I mean, that, that's an option. But I, think, but, but I think we want to point out there is, there is a number of options in addition, not, not necessary instead. Um, and I would be remiss not to mention OpenSUSE Asia Summit. <laughs> right. There is <laughs> a whole other like, it's going thing. To, um, that's a... That's a fascinating community because it's, it's local as in Asia, but Asia as a continent is huge. And there's an there's a organization, there's a core team who really manages um, essentially every year yeah. to, um, to find um, and, and support local orga organizers. So last year it was uh, uh, mostly online, I think, in India. Yeah, it was in India the last This year is times. going to be in October in China. And it was my first, um, after joining the board, my first um, experience was, um, was the summit in, in Bali, organized by the lovely Indonesian team. Um, now, would I love to see more events? Definitely. Um, it would be great to have like one event per country on this planet, at least, and in bigger countries. I don't know if we could be shipped around. I said it would be that. lovely. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Just think about like how how would we divvy up sending each one of us to go to all of these different ones to have board representation there. I, I do my I do my best to make it work, even yeah. if it's on my own dime. Um, yeah. But let's see. Yeah. Uh, one technical question: uh, How many people actually organize this conference? This, this conference? Yep. Um, you're looking at him. <laughs> yeah. That, okay. We're all staring at the one who did it. I expected that. And the second, it's not a question, just like a set a comment uh, that what's there about the middle of May that all uh, technical conferences are happening uh, at one moment? Oh. I would love to go to DevConf because it's it's turning out to be kind of like one of the biggest European conferences uh, by Fedora. And yeah, it's next week or last week or whatever. Yes, yeah, so <clears throat> holiday coordination I'm, is pretty much the reason. <laughs> well, traditionally, at least for this conference, it kind of was planned around the releases, sort of, um, or in a good month in where the weather was nice, right? Um, and then kind of COVID happened and coming out of that, it seemed like all the events kind of got put into a space of about four months. <laughs> so everything's just scrunched together. And it's quite difficult to probably break that mold. Um, but if we do get events organized by teams in other locations, um, then possibly, you know, times can change. I mean, if you go to Spain and in um, sort of like, we'll say, early fall, maybe that would work, you know? I mean, the weather would be fine and um, flights would probably be out of season as far as uh, travel's concerned. So. I think part of the other problem, the part of the other thing is that um, conferences are trying to they're all trying to launch and run before what money is left is gone. Like the, the events launching uh, and, and having them happen sooner rather than later means that they can happen at all in some cases. And I think that's why we're seeing this super tight cluster of events happening right the heck now because they're all afraid that if they let it go to their normal cadences, that they may not happen at all. And for some organizations, that's a death knell for the entire thing. Like, 
I, it, and I, totally, I, I don't blame him for trying to pull that off, but man, uh, figuring out how to go to the ones that I wanted to go to is very difficult right now. <laughs> I think if things relax themselves a bit and, 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 and the, the, again, I keep mentioning this, the financial situation for, for open source improves again, um, we will see conferences spread back out because nobody likes this situation. It is very, very difficult to work this way. Like, me personally, I'm here this weekend for the OpenSUSE conference. I go back home, and then I'm back here oh, two weeks for DevConf CZ, and then I go back home, and I'm going to be possibly back here again in a few more weeks for Academy, then I go back home, and I'm going back again for flock. I have a room you can rent. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I don't like this either. And I imagine there are many people that are in similar boats. So the normal situation is that all this stuff gets spread out. And like, for example, Academy is usually closer to the fall and you tend to have like uh, all these things. But the overall economic tension right now and the fear is driving people to do it as soon as possible. And nobody wants to go in the winter. It's too bloody cold. And so you just have this very small window where the weather is nice and where people feel like it is uh, a reasonable, attractive period. And then you've got you know, the summer vacation types and then you have the, the, the bunch of weird types of state and religious holidays that like, overlap to give like, extra long weekends. Like this one overlaps with the uh, Memorial Day weekend in the United States. So that means I have a day that I can, when, that I have an extra day that, that, that I, can, I have that I would have normally not had. And that, that makes this particular weekend good, you know, if you're a US traveler coming to Germany for the Open Source Conference, where you don't feel screwed right after the event's over to leave that day. You can take an extra day, which is nice. And so stuff like that tends to affect a lot of conference planning. Uh, I mean, just speaking as someone who's like run a couple of those things on the other side, on the, over there. Just pointing out that if I if I listen at your logic, we should have all those events within two or three weeks, so that you only have to travel once. Well, yeah, that's. that's uh, yeah. I think you're trying to murder me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but uh, I mean, I'm quote suffering <laughs> from from the same. So spreading out things, and you know, and then we have SuseCon, and there is. SAP events and Red Hat, and, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, as the Australian in the room, I get to be the person who disagrees, because the fact that this, oh, this, you're not living in Australia, Australia. You were there when I weren't, but um, as the Australian in the room, the fact that this conference is close to another conference is the entire reason I can come this year, which is not what I wanted to talk about. Um, Gerald already spoke about it a bit, but I wanted to point out um, Open SUSE Asia Summit on the organising of conferences, things I've been to many of them now, and they do a fantastic job. Basically, there's four or five different organising teams in the geographical area, which means that not every year it has to be the same group of people organising the conference, but they find big enough teams in each of those places to rotate it between themselves. The other thing they do incredibly well is they manage to find enough sponsorship for the conference that SUSE doesn't have to pay for it, which, when budgets are tight, makes life easier. And so I, I just wanted to point that out as a model that is working for conferences on my side of the world. And yeah, we should pay attention to that and look at that into the future as well. I think that's basically the model we'd have to have for more conferences anyway, because doing just the one is a lot of time, effort, and money. And the, the OpenSUSE Asia community does a fantastic job of running their events and putting it all together and making it as frictionless as possible for it to be successful for in terms of engagement, in terms of presentation, in terms of attendance, and that's wonderful. And, you know, I've seen other communities work this way. Um, in the long ago times, Fedora used to do it this way. There were a couple of string of issues that led to us stop doing that there. Um, but we haven't run into those issues on this project with A OpenSUSE Asia, and I credit that to how well 
that that group is self-organized, and I'm very, very proud of like how well they've managed to run that. Um, that being said, it is extremely hard, and do not underestimate what it takes to pull that off. Um, I would love to see more of that, particularly in the Americas. We do, we do need to see, in, in my opinion, I would love to see more going on in South America in particular. LATAM is a huge opportunity in its own right. But again, it is, it is a lot of work and a lot of effort. And I, it, it's something I want to see, but I, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say right here and now that it'll happen because it, that's really up to somebody taking the charge, figuring it out, and maybe talking to the Open Source Asia people to learn about how they did it right and what they've learned so that they have the better chance of success. The fact that we have the knowledge and the experience within the community is great. Uh, we just need someone who wants to step up to pull it off in another region or in another event or whatever. So here I, I wanted to make a remark because it's clear from, from the conversation that we have many options regarding where to do future co uh, uh, conferences, uh, about the frequency, about the time, whatever. But I believe uh, that in order to have a good uh, well, decision on all that, first we need to ask ourselves what's the goal of this conference, what we want the conference for. Because uh, if, if, if this is a conference for enlarging the open source community to making the, pro the project more visible to the kind of people we want the project to be more visible, maybe the answer to those questions is one. And if we actually want this project just to, ca to be a place where the existing community meet every year, so to foster collaboration for decision taking and whatever, maybe the, the, yeah, the answer is another. So for me, there is a fundamental yeah, reflection we, we have to do is what do we want of Open Source Conference for? What, what is really the goal? Uh, it's something, yeah, because for example, the current model, I, I believe, works very well to just put all the people together, people who is already active in the project, who is already contributing, so we meet it and we put the, yeah, we simply put everything together. But I believe we can, can all agree that if it's about enlarging the community, getting new people interested and so on, I would say it's not that much working. So yeah, that's for me the fundamental. What do we want to achieve? And then we can, we can start talking about all the other considerations like place, frequency, time frame, if it's better or, or worse to be close to other conferences because that, that, yeah, that also being closer or, or, or more far away in the, in the calendar to other conferences is also highly influenced by, by, by the profile of people you are, you are directing the whole thing to. That's a very fair question to ask and I, I, that's part of that's that's part of like figuring out what what you know the what type of content winds up showing up in a conference and what type of uh, what type of marketing advertising things that you do for that. Um, I can kind of draw more from my experience of of doing in coordination work for Flock uh, on this to say that like. The part of the goal for Flock, which is Fedora's contributor conference, is to essentially not only provide a visible physical presence for the Fedora project, for people to see where things are going on and to invite people, but also to create a sustaining force for people who have, you know, coming in to do that, to, to meet other people, to see, uh, to, to make the um, social and emotional connection to other contributors that sustains ongoing uh, contribution and engagement into the project. And that's also part of the reason why the f a flock doesn't stay in one place. It bounces from region between the US and Europe and goes in different places in each of those, in, in each of those regions precisely so that you get a different, you get opportunities to bring different sets of people in every time in addition to those mainstay contributors that are committed to coming to everything. Um, from the OpenSUSE conference perspective, I've always kind of felt that it's a much more 
sustaining force rather than having this mix. And, you know, I, I like coming here and I like seeing all of y'all, but a lot of it is the same faces as I'm sure you've all noticed. Um, and wh whether that's necessarily a problem or not is up for debate, I think. But I certainly would like to see more newer faces. It's why pretty much every time I've come to the conference, I try to drag somebody from Fedora to come over here to you know, meet people because fresh faces creates new links and it creates new bonds and it, it also opens up with new perspectives and things of that nature. I remember the first time I came to OSC, I dragged like 20-ish people from the Fedora community to come to OSC and it was so much fun and everyone who was there then has tried to come to the OpenSUSE conference again and this time I brought a couple of people that had never been here before and one of them said that they will try their hardest to come next year too because they really enjoyed the atmosphere and the way that we engage uh, in, the, in this project, under the, in this event. And so I think it is worth considering exactly that. And if we want to add that more into our mix, then we, we'd have to, you know, we might have to think about how do we diversify where, where the event, the big event is run. Again, my personal opinion about this. Anyone else want to say anything? I think you touched it all. I th think you touched it all, Neil. Okay. No, I just don't want to be the only one to talk. Add something there. Here, hello. So um, maybe a thought for you guys to consider. Uh, what we did with Open Data Connected was we started out with several online micro uh, conferences, if you will. Uh, webinars, meetups, and I've now also done this concept with a number of pharmaceutical organizations uh, that are also very much widely spread around. Uh, they're all involving people and personnel that are not easily transportable because they have to be on site. They're like quality batch release engineers, if you will. Um, so the, the hybrid approach or the online approach would also be something that's relatively easy to organize. Um, you can repeat it pretty often. Uh, OpenSUSE already has an awesome online presence uh, also on Discord and uh, with the forums. Um, so yeah, maybe you give that a thought because if you do go into different places, uh, it always kind of cannibalizes part of your central conference. So if you want to keep kind of the central conference concept but also expand, maybe try out kind of like the water temperature in a virtual uh, way and actually also easily supporting multiple time zones uh, through a virtual uh, approach might be a thing to uh, consider. Go ahead. <laughs> I oh. knew it was I'm, I'm no, what I, um, I'm what I think is help. important for us to, to, to remember is, is not like the board or even the membership or the group of members um, makes this plan for the next year or three years or five years and then you know give it to the marketing people or the conference organizing people which for example Suze has a team that takes care of that yep um, it's really like like we do the code like we do uh, inter localization like we do local communities much if not most of that is actually ground up so I think it's a good idea and I think doing an event in, in, in Greece would be lovely. Um, we, and that includes people in this room and, and outside, um, definitely should give it a try. Sure. And, and, the, and to be clear, the fact that you're providing input and making a proposal doesn't mean you should be on the hook to organize all of that. I definitely um, didn't imply that, however, I want uh, and also this was for HR Open and Dorsflug and it's Open Data Connected. Idea. We have some existing initiatives that already do that and I would love to have uh, OpenSUSE added onto that, uh, that poster because for us it only makes more sense uh, to have an interesting and diverse program. I mean, it could be OpenSUSE micro-conference part of, let's say, Dorsflug follow-up later this year. I think that would be really cool to actually um, explore it. and I think that Doug and Kajan and Patrick know me well enough to know that when I propose such a thing I'm also willing uh, to put my money where my mouth is, so don't worry. So time-wise, um, 
So time-wise, um, I think we're, we're kind of finished. We have to finish up. Anyone want to end anything? Yeah, well, first get up, dude, and let uh, the audience give you a big hand uh, of applause. This, this guy did all the work. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks to everyone who, who helped support the event, organize, uh, make it a success by submitting a presentation, traveling here, helping with video, helping with logistics, taking registrations, helping arrange for the food. Uh, and the problem is I'm surely missing some things, but helping with you know, creating the design for the t-shirts and, 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 and those many things. And that's, that's really what energizes me to, to be part of, of this community, is this coming together and then having the conversations in the garden, sitting here, um, exchanging. So thanks to all of you and the people who are not in the room right now. Video team. I mentioned the video team explicitly. They, uh, they, I mean, the video team does a heck of a job. You know, they um, oh yeah, y'all do a great and job. And the mic runners and, and all of that. So big, big thank you. <laughs> <laughs>